Hi, this is Sarah McLeod, your host for Proven Cures, and today is December 1st, 2018, also known globally as World AIDS Day. And today I want to share a very little known study with you all um, that actually was able to sustain zero reversion in HIV patients. Um, what that means, zero refers to blood, S-E-R-O, and reversion means that patients were um, actually testing HIV negative after completion of the study for up to two years. So if you are HIV positive or you know someone who is HIV positive, your first inclination might be, you know, I don't need to listen to this. My meds are working just fine for me. Um, well, let me tell you, the Prophet Muhammad, uh, the Muslim Prophet Muhammad, uh, is reported to have said that black seed oil was able to cure everything except for death. And this study actually puts that claim to the test. And there's some background to actually the pathology of HIV that I want to share with you before you dismiss uh, the study or the study results. Um, because you're thinking, well, my HIV is, un is well under control. It's probably at uh, undetectable levels and I'm feeling fine. I really have no reason to switch or to try something different. And I'm definitely not telling you to abandon your current regimen. I'm just telling you that you might want to listen to this because your current regimen is not able to provide zero reversion. Meaning if you uh, are not able to access your meds, your the virus is going to replicate. It is going to grow in the bloodstream and in the body. And you're always beholden to your meds. What uh, this study found was that the consumption of this concoction of black seed oil and honey was able to provide uh, serial reversion from six months and seven days after uh, treatment was given up to two years. That's how long the person was followed for uh, after the study. Okay, so let me explain um, to those who might not understand what I'm saying is that after two to four weeks after initial infection with the HIV virus, a person will normally have a very high viral load and a very low amount of the white blood cells known as T cells or CD4 cells. Okay, and during that time, the body will exhibit flu-like symptoms such as uh, high fever and uh, rash. But what a lot of people don't know is that while the body is going through those symptoms and is trying to fight off this new uh, viral attack on the cells, the virus is also finding sanctuary sites in the body. It's finding other places in the body besides the bloodstream where it can have a safe haven, so to speak. That's why they're called sanctuary sites. And these sanctuary sites include the genital tract, the lymph nodes of the body, the brain, the nerves, so that's the entire central nervous system, and other various organs of the body. So when a person actually starts antiretroviral medication, also known as heart therapy, to bring the virus under control, the medication is able to arrest duplication of the virus in the bloodstream. But it is not able, it is very difficult for it to attack the virus in those sanctuary sites of the body. So you have a lot of people who are HIV positive who limit their travel or they may not travel at all and the reason for that is because they know that if they by some unfortunate incident are not able to access their meds the virus will replicate very quickly and probably uh, get out of control they'll end up having to have a new set of blood tests to uh, find out what they what uh, drugs they're now immune to what they're able to take what drugs will actually start helping and it just becomes a, a, a whole ordeal all over again. So a lot of people don't travel. So if you can relate to that, then that alone is a reason for you just to hear me out, uh, listen to the results of the study. It's actually just a, uh, a case study. Because it started out with just one person, um, an artist in Nigeria, who uh, went to go see this doctor. 
and uh, the doctor was actually a herbalist who made a concoction and I'm going to share with you now what that concoction is um, give me one second because I want it I want what I'm saying to be a hundred percent accurate I don't want to give any and I, I'm, I'm switching between different um, stuff I wrote up versus another print up versus the actual study on pubmed.gov so just bear with me um, while I switch around a bit so the mixture that was made was 10 milliliters consisting of 60% black seed powder and 40% honey this was taken 12 hours apart twice per day by this person for six months um, and the actual amount of black seed powder consumed was one teaspoon twice per day so that'll give you an idea of how much if you want to do the mixture for yourself how much black seed powder so you would mix a teaspoon of black seed powder to approximately half that amount of honey and that would be your your dose in the morning and in the evening for six months um, and because this is a case study this was just for one person this won't be long, a long description or anything like that I can tell you the person when they uh, presented to the herbalist had not begun any treatment at the time um, and they pre the person presented with chronic fever diarrhea weight loss and multiple papular pruritic pruritic meaning itchy lesions that had uh, persisted for three months by that time um, the HIV was confirmed via ELISA and Western blot tests. Um, their viral load at the time of the start of the study prior to treatment was 27,000 copies per milliliter of blood and their CD4 count was 250 cells per tablespoon of blood. Okay. Now, upon treatment, after treatment, on the fifth day after treatment, the fever disappeared. By the seventh day after treatment, the diarrhea was gone. By the twentieth day of treatment, all of the itchy lesions had disappeared. On day thirty, their CD4 counts, his CD4 count and viral loads were taken again. The viral load, remember, at the start of the study was twenty-seven thousand copies per milliliter of blood. By day thirty, and this was the only treatment; they were not on any antiretroviral therapy at all. By day 30, the viral load was at less than 1,000 copies per milliliter. Also, what was noted was that the CD4 count had also decreased um, down to 160 cells. Um, but by the 187th day, so that would be six months and seven days out, the uh, ELISA test and the Western blot test were repeated and came up negative so the person uh, came up as HIV negative and um, the CD4 count and uh, viral load were taken again and by that point their CD4 count was up to 650 cells per tablespoon of blood and the uh, viral load was completely undetectable which was to be expected since they were negative on their HIV tests um, that the uh, person was tested repeatedly up to two years now the the uh, therapy was only given for six months so at the end of six months no more 